Revision can be a boring and very lonely process. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna revise the topic of sales with you. So to help stay focused and avoid those distractions, stick around and we're gonna revise this topic together. Whether you have a test coming up on sales or you just want to revise sales to keep on top of the year 12 content whilst learning year 13, this will be perfect for you. So let's start by just quickly going over what is the best strategy for revision. And if you're at my free masterclass, then you would have seen this already, but there are three simple steps for effective revision. And that is step one, you have to understand everything. Step two, you have to remember everything. And then step three is you have to practice. So the exam questions. But the key thing that people often don't realize is the proportion of time that ideally you should spend on each of these. So you should spend the first 20% of your revision time understanding the information. Because if you don't understand it in the first place, you're not gonna be able to remember it. You won't understand what you're remembering and you definitely won't be able to do the exam questions. Once you've understood it, you then go on to the remembering and about 40% of your revision time should be spent on remembering. And then finally, the last 40% is exam practice. So I'm gonna go through with you for understanding, remembering and the practicing with exam questions, what you could do for the sales topic. And I'm actually gonna go through it with you. So stick around and we're gonna get a whole chunk of revision done together. By the way, all the resources I'm going to be using in this revision lesson, I'm going to link in the description below. They're my tried and tested resources, which examiners for the exam board have checked and students, as you can see, absolutely love them and have made huge amounts of progress using them. So step one is understanding. And even though the understanding stage, I do recommend you use YouTube videos like mine or your textbook or my A-level notes, you can still make this stage active rather than passive. So I'm not going to use my YouTube videos for this because me revising with my YouTube videos in one of my YouTube videos feels a bit too inception-y for me. So instead, I'm going to show you using my A-level notes, how I'd approach this understanding stage. So the sorts of things that I would then do to use my A-level notes in an active way to check I'd understood the information is you could find diagrams like this one here, where you've got the cell structure or an organelle structure and turn that into a bullet point list or a description of the cell, what it contains and structural features of the organelles. Or you have it the other way around and see a list of the organelles in a cell and have to draw it or have a list of the structures and have to draw it or it could be linked to cell fractionation where you're looking at cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation of how you can break open a cell and then separate out all of the cell organelles to then be able to isolate and examine them and that is a lengthy practical process so instead of just writing it out passively copying, you could then create diagrams to show what's happening at each stage to check you've understood it. Or it could be the other way around, have a look at the diagram and then turn it into a block of text. So essentially when you do that understanding stage for the cell topic, you need to either use the notes, turn text into a picture, a picture into text, or you could use it to create flashcards. Or if you are gonna use my YouTube videos and you could pause as you go and try and create a mind map to show how all the information connects, flashcards, bullet point lists. But to check you fully understood it, you should really not just be copying down, you need to be processing that information in some way. So step two, is then the best ways to remember that information. And for this topic, I'm gonna to show you two things that I'd be doing. First of all, blurting. And blurting is when you give yourself a period of time to draw down everything you can remember from that topic. You then have a look at your notes or specification afterwards and a bright color pen, you add in what you missed off. So I'm gonna do that now for the sales topic. I'm gonna to have a go at listing or drawing, just basically blurting everything I can remember about cell structure. When I've finished, I'll then check anything I've forgotten, I'll add it in. So you can have a go at this at this point as well. Give yourself five minutes. So pause the video, give yourself five minutes, drawing down or writing down everything you can remember about eukaryotic cell structure. That's what I'm gonna be focusing on. So I'm gonna have a go now, you can do it with me.
So then the second activity you can do for the remembering stage is flashcards. And yes, of course, I'm gonna talk about flashcards because I love them, they're my favorite revision technique. So I'm gonna use my topic two flashcards now and you're gonna see the way that I am using them. Okay, so next I'm gonna have a go at revising with my flashcards. And I'm gonna create two separate piles for where to put my flashcards. Let's use some of my pastel highlighters. So this is gonna be my, got it wrong, so try again. And that's gonna be, you got it correct, move on. Okay, so have a go at testing yourself with me on these cards. So we've got occasional features of prokaryotes. Okay, so these are organelles that are not always present, but sometimes. So I'm thinking slime capsule, plasmids, and the pili or pili. Oh, and flagellum. Okay, so because I forgot flagellum, I went for pili instead. I would have to put it onto this pile. Okay, contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Uh, okay, so prokaryotic cells are smaller. They have 70S ribosomes instead of 80S ribosomes. Um, they don't have any membrane-bound organelles, so that means they won't have a nucleus. All of those structures we just said there, but that's only sometimes present. So let's see. Smaller, no membrane-bound organelles, no nucleus, 70S ribosomes. Oh, and again, one more. So prokaryotic cells. So you do have cellulose cell walls in plants, which are eukaryotic. Prokaryotic have murine. So it'd have to go on this pile. That's how strict you need to be when you're using flashcards. Unless you got everything correct on the card, it goes on the try again pile. Otherwise, I would have thought I knew all of that or remembered it all when in fact, I I forgot a point so I need to have that there. Then we've got the cell vacuole structure so it's got fluid center, tonoplast membrane on the outside, it can contain colored pigments, fluid filled, tonoplast, Woohoo! okay got one. Cell wall structure so I'm going to say cellulose cell wall if it's eukaryotic plants, chitin if it's eukaryotic fungi, murin if it is prokaryotic. So we've got plant fungi bacteria, cellulose, chitin, murin, yes so that can go on that pile. The mitochondria structure then is a double membrane bound organelle. We have the matrix fluid center. It contains loops of DNA. It has its own 70S ribosomes. It's got the folded inner mitochondrial membrane, which is known as the Christi. So double membrane, Christi, 70S, DNA, and the enzymes in the matrix. Chloroplast structure, double membrane bound. It's got thylakoid membranes which are stacked to make grana. It's also got a loop of DNA, 70S ribosomes. The enzymes are in the stroma. It contains chlorophyll. Oh, I said function. Oh, I've got to read it carefully. I'm going to quickly swap over. So I've just done that one, structure. So thylakoid membranes, grana, um, stroma, DNA. Chloroplast function. So cytophage synthesis. So we've got light dependent reactions on the thylakoid membrane, light independent reactions in the stroma. But this point, because it's a topic two, you just had to say cytophage synthesis, making glucose. Function of mitochondria is aerobic respiration to produce ATP for metabolism. So not just respiration, it's aerobic specifically yeah aerobic respiration to make ATP okay so then once I've gone through the whole pack the ones I've got correct put in here the ones I've got wrong you then go through and test yourself on again. So we've got lysosome structure, membrane bound sac filled with digestive enzymes, so such as Golgi vesicles. Contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA. So back onto this one. So small, oh not DNA, just cells. It's smaller. Prokaryotic of murine cell walls, eukaryotic of chitin and cellulose. No membrane bound organelles, no nucleus. I can't remember if I said 70S ribosomes now. I feel like I did, but tell me in the comments if I didn't because I'm putting it in that pile. Occasional features of prokaryotes. Flagella is the one I forgot the first time. So flagella, plasmids, 
and the capsule. Cool. So once you've got to that stage, that can then go in the tick pile. You can go through them again, but the other way round. So test yourself both ways. So now you could say, what is this a description of? Well, that is the vacuole. Yes, so you can put it there. And then once you've gone through it that way and done the same thing, any that you've got wrong, do them again. Shuffle them. So some forwards, some backwards and shuffle the order. So it's not just your memory, your brain remembering the order rather than the contents. And there we go, that is us revising the cells using the flashcards, which don't forget, if you do want to get your hands on these flashcards, linked in the description below. And then finally, step three is the exam practice. So once you've understood the information and you've got a memory of it, which realistically you probably wouldn't do all three stages in one chunk like we're doing now, you might want to come back to this exam practice bit in a few days or a week. But when you've got to that stage where you understand it, you remember it, now you need to test yourself. Can you apply that to exam questions and start to improve your exam technique and see what kinds of questions typically come up and what comes up on the mark scheme a lot. So I'm gonna have a go at some exam questions now. I recommend that you pause each time the question comes up, have a go yourself, and then mark it as I go through it. So here's exam question one for us to have a go at together. So outline the similarities, and what I'd do is highlight as I go. So we're looking at similarities in and the differences between the structure of chloroplasts and mitochondria. So those are the two that we're comparing. And you can bullet point your answers, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna start with the similarities. So let's go for both have double membrane, are double membrane bound organelles. That's one similarity. Something else they have in common, they both, have 70s ribosomes because so we're just thinking about the structures here not the function both contain loops of dna and it's only four marks so let's start to think about some differences now so they do both have a fluid filled center but fluid filled center is matrix in mitochondria and stroma in the chloroplast and then if we think about that highly folded membrane, so there's the Christi in the mitochondria, whereas we have the thylakoid membrane in the chloroplast. Okay, so I've got five points. We only need four. We've definitely looked at similarities. We looked at differences, comparing the structures of those two. So if you've had a go, we're gonna have a look at the mark scheme now. I'm just quickly going through, correcting all my spelling mistakes. So I was typing at the same time as talking. But let's take a look. So similarities, we have got double membranes. We've got that mark. We got the DNA, we got the ribosomes. That's three marks already. Then we've got thylakoids, lamellia grana versus Christi, which we did have. We had stroma versus matrix so yeah the other ones you could have had with these two here but um, that answer then did get all of those marks so that was four marks for that question next time we've got described two functions of the golgi apparatus in a eukaryotic cell so for this one i'm going to go for modify proteins and modify lipids but you could say well i imagine we'll have a look at process instead of those two but let's have a look at the marks so we've got modify package transport proteins make transport glycoproteins modify package transport lipids or make or transport glycolipids and then forms or releases vesicles or lysosomes. Then let's go to the last question. Four marks, you might want to pause and have a go. We've got to describe the structure and the function of the nucleus. So I'm going to start by listing the descriptions of the structure. So I'm going to say it's got a nuclear envelope and pause in it and I'm deliberately putting those two because I remember seeing on a mark scheme before that you had to have both of those ideas to get the mark. A nucleoplasm which is the fluid inside. Nucleolus contains chromosomes. So those are some descriptions. Let's then have functions. So within the nucleus that is the site of DNA replication. The nucleolus is where ribosomes are made. In the nucleus, that's also where transcription happens. 
And if we think about the fact it contains all the chromosomes, it contains the genome of a cell. So that's what I'm going to go for for this one. Let's see. Have we got four marks from that list? Let's scroll down. So nuclear envelope and pore. So yes, I've got that one. Contains chromosomes. I've got that one. Nucleolus. Yes. So that's it in terms of the structure, but three marks for the structure. Then for the function, genetic information material. So it might not have given it to me for, in fact, it definitely wouldn't have given me the genome because they want genetic information for making polypeptides. However, I've got DNA replication, production of ribosomes as well, and then production of mRNA. I think transcription was also accepted for that. So that is all the marks for that question. So that's it. That is our revision session done for part one of revising cells. If you do have a test coming up, you're going to need to do more than what we've just done in this video, but it'll be this idea on repeat. So understand, remember, and then the exam practice. So best of luck if you do have a test coming up, and I really hope you found it helpful. And if you do want to get your hands on any of the resources that we use today, such as the notes or the flashcards, they are linked in the description below. And if you did find this helpful, then check out this video next where you can revise biological molecules with me. But for now, that's it and I'll see you next week.